Hello everyone, welcome to the Jarkus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 7th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, A Friend Indeed. Now this is a bit of an interesting episode because it hardly focuses on the villains or even the monster of the week at all. They only get a handful of minutes across the entire episode. The real focus here is the rangers and their beast spot companions. It starts off with the beast spots making several mistakes, very minor, but still very inconvenient for the rangers as far as they're concerned. I mean, Smash gets some green icing on Ravi somehow, Cruz is late to showing up to help Devin, and Jax misplaces Zoe's office supplies with party supplies. However, there's no time to do all that for now because a bunch of Tronics start attacking. So the Rangers go to fight them, but it's all a trap because the Beast Bots are there to decide. And our Revotron this week is based off a uh, train. So he's called Railtron. And he sneaks up behind Jax and Smash and extracts data from them. And I can make some restart the systems. And it gets loaded onto a two colored disc. But when it comes to Jax, Zoe notices this attempted attack and blasts him off and makes him retreat. Now when Cruz and Smash are finished rebooting, they sound completely robotic. They have no inflection or personality to their voices at all. They just mindlessly obey Devin and Ravi. And Nate discovers that the Robotron stole their memory data. And, and if he gets it from all three of them, then the enemy can learn how to control their Beast X Megazord. Not good, I'd say. Now Devin and Ravi think this is a good thing, because that means they'll just do exactly what they say. Unfortunately, this is not the case, because it also took away their artificial intelligence to adapt to a situation. For Cruz, Devin goes to a shortcut through the woods, but Cruz keeps going dangerously close to a bunch of trees, some of them getting branches in Devin's face, and eventually just drives through a puddle of mud, doesn't even try to evade it or anything. And Ravi's in training, he tells Smash not to hold back and not to wait till he's ready. So Smash does one little punch and sends him flying. And Ravi's like, whoa, whoa, that's not good. And when they talk to Nate, he says, So you're saying they're in the wrong when the Rebels did exactly as you ordered to? And Zoe's not in the clear either because she yells at Jax for losing her tablet. When really, it's on account of charging and she put her jacket up right in front of it, covering it up. So yeah, the Rangers are not being very appreciative of their robot buddies. Especially when they see a table with a big cake and a banner that says, Thank you, Rangers. Turns out the B-Spots know how hard the Rangers work to help protect the entire city. So they wanted to throw a small little party to celebrate their bravery and their efforts. So of course this humbles all three of the Rangers. They realize they've been completely complacent and stupid and whatever. Of course there's a Power Rangers, so you can't linger on that feeling for too long because the enemy returns. This time they set a trap. Jax comes out. All by himself, Veltron tries to take his data. However, Zoe uses a new upgrade to the Beast Blaster that lets it create holograms. It was actually shown off before the Rangers for its battle this episode. So she comes out of a crate that's just right next to Jax. Of course, it wasn't really a crate, it was a hologram. She's able to knock him off and get the two data discs back. Why he didn't let Scrobs or the Avatars just keep that data? I don't know. That would have been a strategic advantage for our villains in the cyber dimension. At any rate, they get that to Nate so that he can restore the Beast Spot's regular data. And the Rangers make quick work of the Railtron. I mean, he tries one attack to which the Rangers just disintegrate with their blasters. And then they defeat him. It's barely even a fight. It's probably one of the quickest on-ground battles I've ever seen in Power Rangers. <laughs> Of course, we also need a Zord battle, so Scrozzle not only makes a Gigadrone of Railtron, but also a couple Gigatronics to help it out. Yes, we now have Megazordtronics as well. And these three work in tandem by connecting together like a train, and using combination attacks. So of course the Rangers can't really do much to with the individual Zords. To make that work, they of course make the B-Sex Megazord. And their first sort of business is to get rid of the two Gigatronics. They don't even charge up attack, they just shoot, like, two lasers in a V-shape from the sword, and that destroys them in the middle of the air. It looked pretty cool and was unexpected. And from that, they use their regular finishing move, the Hyper Strike. And that, of course, destroys the Giga Drone of Railtron. Now, in the aftermath, there's no party for the Rangers, because the Rangers throw a party for the Beast Bots. 
to show how much they appreciate them because they also work hard. And so their conflict is, is resolved. However, in the cyber dimension, we see what's going on. Scrozzo is building a cyber gate with a bunch of parts, many of them that he stole from the last episode. Now, Scrozzo explains that this can be used to send Evox back to the Earth dimension and give him control of the Morphin Grid. So yeah, it's a dangerous new weapon that's being built, and the Rangers don't even know about it. So that's building up some really good suspense for next time. Overall, this episode was aight. I enjoyed it, but I didn't really like the writing for it as much. The reason for that is because they just made it blatantly obvious what was going to happen. That the Rangers were just going to be too harsh on the Beast Bots. And then something was going to happen to them. And then they learned to appreciate each other. Just because of how extremely negatively they reacted to this. When before, whenever they had little small little things where they disagreed with the Beast Bots, they still got along just fine. So I don't know, like this and like with Devin's last episode just getting so angry. I don't know, it's just showing the characters a little out of place. Again, much like last time, it could have been better as an earlier episode where the Rangers were getting used to being companions with the Beast Bots. But seeing how friendly they became right away and how naturally they adjusted to each other, it just seems a little bit too little too late to show this sort of conflict. So that's a big negative on this episode to me. Now, I hope very soon that this trend of our main characters getting angry over little things and just driving a wedge between themselves, because that's not what we want to see of Power Rangers. We like to see the team work together and not drive themselves apart, especially when these characters are already built up to have strong connections to each other in a short time. It just seems extremely jarring to have these petty little things create a rift, even if it's just for the course of an episode. This episode was light on action, and that's fine, it didn't need a lot. It served its purpose and it didn't overstate its welcome. But I think I liked this even less than the last episode, definitely. And aside from that scene at the end with Scrozzle, there was no reason to keep this around. I recommend skipping this episode. And if you agree with me or think there's some good that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I'll see you all for the next episode. Until then, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and let the power protect you.